I haven't been in front of you or in the studio now for what? God, it's been almost two, two months. months. Yeah, because I was in Asia for six weeks. I'm, I'm going to be a little crazy right now because I just got really good news. I just bought a house. Where? And I'm tripping out. I just bought a house. Oh, hey, yeah, sit right there, baby. Our guest just got here. Just post out over there, and we'll bring you on in a minute. We got our guest, uh, Greg Sipes, just showed up. I was just sharing the good news. Oh, He's got his dog. Yeah. And I just found out 30 minutes ago that I got a house in Joshua Tree. For you guys out there listening, Joshua Tree is about two hours outside of L.A., and it's like being on the moon. It's like this beautiful desert, nature. You're under the stars. You have a fire. Big, in the, hippie it, it's area. pretty hippie, but it's also a real redneck country. So it's a little both. Like so you get both. both of our it's like Austin. Like Austin has both. Austin's the best. So it's sort of like the Austin of California. And I'm so I'm I'm just tripping out because I, I I'm basically putting all my life savings. I'm putting it all down in one hand on black. I'm going for it. So I'm putting all my money on this one house and then I'm back to zero money in the bank. Like I'm talking eating top ramen and borrowing money to like but you have a house. I, I'll own the and house. Land. I'll, exactly. I'll own that, but I'm going to be back at square one and I don't give a fuck. I love it. So I'm just kind of tripped out. I just got a house. That's that's yeah. huge news. Your big boy purchase. I, I, I can't believe it. I'm tripping out. Do you feel like an adult? I never have felt like an adult and I never will, but it feels, it's scary. It's like a big responsibility. Yeah. Anyway, I so I just had to get that off my, my uh, bird chest. Let's talk about uh, you. What's going on with you? Um, had a very aggressive holidays back in the South. Oh yeah. You went yeah. back to North Carolina. Tell me. Yeah. Um, we went to the Greenbrier in West Virginia. It's what like, is that? It's like the first resort in America. It's like, there's a presidential bunker there. Okay. What'd you do? Just drink with your family? Yeah. My grandmother was there and okay. she acted like a complete asshole. She's racist, usual. right? Yes. Okay. She, you were just in Bali. Right. And we had a Balinese server at one mm. of the restaurants and she told them that they make great servants. And I was oh, like, oh, wow. well, that is not, and then she ran off on her scooter. Oh, wait, yeah. you ran off or drove off? Drove off. Okay. Drove off. Uh, the, the Balinese woman did? No, my grandmother. Oh, she has a scooter? Yeah, she has a rascal. She's a rascal. Yeah, she it's got a, a hip replacement. She can't walk. Um, now, yeah, so I was just in Bali, which was amazing. I got, I'm, I, I'm just going to sound like such a douchebag. I got a house. I just was in Bali, but these are what's happening. I was in Bali, Vietnam, Cambodia, and Thailand for which six weeks. Which one was weeks. your favorite? Uh, Bali and yeah. I went with the girl I'm dating which is a big deal because we just started dating and it's a six week trip together we, we went for a month and we pushed it back two weeks look I can't travel with anybody for six weeks my mom my best friend anybody that's a long trip and we just started dating so it was like how many fights one about it was about an hour no, <laughs> no, I know. Um, it was just something. It was something. We were both exhausted because we went from Bali to Vietnam and it, to 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 like uh, this really crazy city called Ho Chi Minh, which is the yeah. old Saigon, which is like gnarly rat race, crazy city. So we basically went from like Zen heaven to like rat race, and we we're both kind of razzled, frazzled. Is that the word? And we both kind of uh, were stressed out, and we got in a disagreement about the hotel that we rented, and it was it wasn't even a fight. It was like an almost fight, and. I said, I'm going to take a walk. So I walked for 10 minutes, mm -hmm. came back, and it was over. And that was like the only pseudo fight we had in six weeks. That's so that was, huge. I know, it's huge. So, because I'm, yeah, so it, the trip went well. The trip went well. Yeah, and yeah. then it inspired you to purchase property. Well, okay, so I sold my house in L.A. about four years ago in Laurel Canyon. We're going to talk about this with my guest, Greg, because he actually was my neighbor in Laurel Canyon, and now he and I are neighbors in Venice. So it's kind of funny. We have a very similar vibe. We both like to be, so, at least for living in Babylon, we want to be in as much of a chill vibe as possible, which is the beach and Laurel Canyon. But times have changed, and we're going to get into that. So I've been looking for the last four years, like, where do I want to go <clears throat> like live mm -hmm. that's in somewhat out of the rat race? So I've been looking in... I was looking in Northern California. I was looking in Bali. I was looking in Costa Rica. I'm like, where should I buy something to get the fuck out of t town and still spend some time here? And then eventually I was going to Joshua Tree and it just checked all the boxes. It's nature. It's a two hour drive. It's beautiful. It's just got, it's, a, it, it's slow. And property value. Property. It's a good time to buy. It'll, you know, it's going to appreciate in value. So basically I just found this spot. The other day, and the whole time I was in Asia, the realtor, he sent me a photo of it. He goes, hey, I found this spot before it goes online, before we list it. I want you to come look at it. So I was just obsessing on it. Like, I'd be looking at the picture every day. I'm looking on the map, Googling where it was. I'm calling my friends who live in Joshua Tree. They're like, yeah, dude, that's the best spot. Oh. And I was all excited. And I flew home and went right to look at it, jet lag, and drove like 
all day to go look at it. And as That's soon insane. as I got there, I'm like, this is it. This is the one I want. You know. So I basically told, and I met the owner of the house and I said, hey, uh, uh, I love it. Uh, you know, I'd like to get it. And he goes, well, I have to show it to some other people first. So I'm like, fuck, I'm not going to get it. And I just kept positive the last few days and I just got the call. I got it. Because the owner out. liked you. He liked me. Because you had he, good vibes. He thought I had good vibes, so I tricked them. That's not true. It's I know, a good I'm thing. So I'm really excited right now. Plus, I had three coffees. <sighs> well, I thought we were off the caffeine. No, no, but now I'm sober, so I'm doing no. Ca- I'm doing uh, caffeine. We're on the caffeine. I'm on 28 days sober. Oh, God. I know. Wow. I'm trying to go three months. but Three I don't, months? Yeah, three months sober. 90-day reset, they call it. Is that in a book, or is this just made up? I just made it up. Oh, okay. But have you ever done sober? No, I've never done dry January sober anything. Right. You know, but it's okay. You know, I feel like for you, but you pretty much just drink. Yeah, I don't do okay. any drugs. Right. Okay. Which is very surprising. I feel you. You know what? You're gonna come to Joshua Tree, and I'm gonna make you do mushrooms. Wait, I don't. Um, no, you don't. What have do you to. think is gonna happen though? I think it's gonna. What if all, I freak out? You might freak out a little bit. That's all. What part if I the, turn into a different person? That might be a good thing. It might be a good thing. That's yeah. what I'm saying. But <laughs> I feel even a bad trip is a good trip. Uh, have you had a bad trip? Oh yeah, absolutely. And you still do it. I mean, not often, but I think once in a while it's important to do a psychedelic reset. I do. But where where do you get the mushrooms? Oh, um, at, not, c- at CVS. No, but I'm no. being serious. Uh, How I do you know my, if they're good? Uh, his name's Ricky. Lives at one two six. No, I get them from my connections, baby. Okay. Yeah. Well, I would trust your mushrooms. I really would because I feel like right. if you're gonna buy from someone, buy from someone that knows. What well, yeah. Doing. Well, you want someone to have tried them before. Yeah. But yeah anyway, I'm not condoning drugs to anyone out there, but here's the thing: mushrooms with drugs. are different. It's different. It's like saying uh, like all drugs aren't bad, but some drugs are bad. There's like high vibration drugs and low vibration. Do you feel drugs. like because it, it's Cocaine from the earth? Absolutely. Like cocaine and pharmaceutical pills, that's that's low vibration drugs. But like But that feels more like my vibe. I know. <laughs> um and but I think like like drugs like mushrooms and you know, weed used to be weed has actually become something that I don't like anymore because it kinda lowers my vibe. I think mushrooms and certain other plant medicines higher your vibration and kinda open your mind and you become Wait, more enlightened. Wait, did you lick the the frog in no, Bali? That's, that's no, I didn't lick the frog in Bali. That's a different thing. There's the uh <laughs> That there's a few different toads and frogs that are in the psychedelic plant medicine realm. One of them's called a combo, where they burn the frog into That's your skin. That's what I'm thinking of. But you don't get high on that one. It's a detox. You I just vomit. Like yeah, you vomit. It's every and supermodel's you, dream. Yeah, you get like a 25-minute severe... I haven't done it yet, but um, you get like a 25-minute severe uh, diarrhea vomit. No. But then supposedly it's like the best detox you could do. I like the toxicity in my body All right, so because you know then I put more toxins in. Right, Retox. two negatives equals a positive. That's science. Yeah, I'm just kidding. First of all, I would never tell anyone they have to do. It. I hate when people are like, "Oh, dude, you got to do ayahuasca." I'm like, "No, I don't. I don't got to do anything." Like, if it's it happens, free will. It happens. If I want to do it, I'll do it. Well, that's another big topic. Free will. That's that's a what's, whole another conversation. If free will, free will. What's the is doctor's birthday? What's that? It's the doctor's birth. It's what is? MLK Day. Oh, oh, today is yes. Yeah, yes. you got to. Even though this will be airing not on um, today, but yes, you are right. And I felt like it was almost a little. I don't know why we're working today. I feel a little guilty about it. Right. But because most places are closed today, right? Like yeah. Bank, like banks, banks and stuff. Right. Yeah, they're celebrating the doctor's birthday. Right. Uh, can you quote any Martin Luther King? Oh, um, darkness cannot drive out darkness, only light can, or something Ooh, like, like that. That's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, judge not a man by the color no. of his skin, but by the depth of his wallet, or something like that. that. Very close. Oh, yeah. Very close. Yeah, I need to study a little bit more on my. Uh, well, all my... the girls are posting inspirational quotes, and I just love it. How do Instagram <laughs> girls do that? They put a pic. They put a picture of themselves looking over their shoulder with their butt, and then they do like a, a, a roomy <laughs> quote. It's a little annoying, but I get it. I like, love it. It's a vibe. They're showing their depth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. On that note, I think we should bring in our lovely guest, Greg Sipes, old friend of mine. We actually had him on the show before, but there was an audio problem, so we had to lose it. So let's try this again, shall we? Take two. Take two. Switch seats. Greg, get, jump on in here, baby, with your dog. There he is, baby. He's here with the guru. The guru of the gurus. Yeah. Hey. The highest form of life on the planet. Hey, baby. I haven't seen you in so long. Wing Manji missed you. Take it over. Yeah, it was fun. We had a really fun creative session last night working on a new cartoon together. So let me introduce uh, uh, Greg to everybody. He's an old friend of mine. We uh, go way back like car seats. And we did a movie together, a, pe- uh, a Paris Hilton National Lampoon movie in Miami. We bonded. We became friends. Now we're neighbors. 
That's right. And you are best known probably for um, Teen Titans Go, I would imagine. Yeah, that's right, yo. I'm Beast Boy. (laughs) It's all about the peace, loving animals, yo. So that's your big role, right? That's, that's one of my big roles. 20 years playing Beast Boy. It's been 20 years? Yeah, I helped create him. Um, he's a he's the first ever vegan vegetarian superhero. No. And one of my other big roles is Michelangelo from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. That's probably the one I would imagine older people my age might know because that cartoon, that series has been around a lot longer than Teen... Is it Teen or Teen Titans Go? Teen, uh, teen Titans teen. Go and Teen Titans and also Young Justice and... All the different incarnations of Beast Boy now, I get to play all of them. Dude, I feel like that's the best gig in Hollywood is voiceover cartoon because you get to show up to work. You don't have to be like hair and makeup and be, and you get to just make all the money that an actor would make, but you're incognito. It's really a sweet situation. Wow. And now I'm making cartoons, which is really fun. Yeah, you. so now you're on the production side. I'm doing it all. Tell me, what's next? What well, are you on? not only am I making cartoons, I'm actually rolling out a television network, basically, that's a, like a Adult Swim meets MTV when MTV was cool. Right. And uh, it's, it's really a, a, a really unique situation because not only are we creating original programming, but we're reaching out to people who have uh, cool stuff they're sitting on and kind of cutting it into our blocks of entertainment. So like creators out there who are sitting on pilots or documentaries or anything essentially that not a lot of people have seen and they're just sitting on it and, and we find that it's good for our network then mm-hmm. we we license it and and uh expose it and package it together and uh do you find working on that side uh well, i was about to say that side of the camera but on a cartoon you're really not on either side of the camera do you like doing the production stuff more uh, than the acting stuff it's given me a sense of awareness um like for instance as an actor, I would just show up. Right. I would record my lines right. and leave. And then uh, a couple months later, it would be on TV and it would be awesome. Wow, that was cool. It was magic. There we go. Now I have a great uh, respect for the process. Yeah, you learn it's a lot so, on the other side. Yeah. It's so intense and takes so many people to pull off a cartoon or anything for that matter, a television right. show, anything. So now as a producer, I have... Um, just a, a deep sense of gratitude for the for the people involved and, and how long actually everything takes everything is so time consuming and takes so many uh, people and there's so many moving parts in production yeah i guess you don't realize that so much when you're either watching it as someone who's not in the business at all just to watch it you're like oh you kind of don't have an understanding of like how much goes into it but even like you said like being an actor and you just kind of show up and read your lines you don't still realize how much goes into it, but then when you start getting on the other side of, you realize like writing, uh, producing, directing, editing, like something legal could take, calls. Oh yeah, well, that's we've been going through that forever, and 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 uh, it, something could take as long as a year for like a twenty minute pilot or something, or longer. Yeah, or longer. Even the development process. Say you come yeah. up with a great idea, um, like I just sold a show to DreamWorks, and two years later we finally. They finally hired the writer for the show, but it's still in the development process. Two years, though. It took about a year of um, legal paperwork, essentially, and then another year to... I mean, everything is... Uh, you know, there's no one time frame about any of it. It, right. it's, it could be really quick or it could be very long, but usually it's very long. Well, that's what... Uh, uh, in the few times I've experienced being on the other side of producing something, You, it, it, it's... Uh, what the problem for me is that then the creative juices kind of can sometimes start to go away because you're all stoked on something and you're ready to go. And then six months later, they're still doing contracts and you're just like, ah, like, fuck, man, now I want to do something else. Like, it's yeah, from someone like me with ADD, sure. I lose interest. So it's hard to stay focused and interested in something for like a year. That's why you got to really love who you're working with. That's why right. I know like the project we're working on together. It's like, I know even if there's a lull in our energy, once we come together, our passion for making a difference in the world with with content yeah. will surface again. And it did last night. Yeah, that was a good meeting. With Matt Powers, yeah. who's a genius artist, animator, he is great. director, and yeah. it, it came to life again, even even though we took a couple months off. Um, yeah. You know, just because we care about what we're doing and we love who we work with. And that's my thing. I don't want to work with any assholes. Well, yeah, I guess you've afforded that luxury. For most people, they probably don't get to pick who they want to work with. But now that you're producing, you can pick your army, For, you know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, and so I don't want to jinx our project. Let's loosely talk about what we're working on. We have, uh, uh, I was working on a kid's album. 
uh, for fun. I think I told you about the kids album yes. I was doing. And I uh, just thought it'd be cute to do a rap album for kids or music for kids. And you heard it and loved it and played it for the people in your uh, production company. And you guys said, hey, we should make something out of this. So that's all I'll say is that you and I are now working on something for this kids album. And uh, I just, again, like working with my friends like you because... Who doesn't want to work with their friends? But here's another side to that. Yeah. Sometimes it gets weird when you work with like business and pleasure. Sometimes can get a little funny, but we'll make sure we always stay communicative because I don't want to lose friends over work because that's happened to me before. Yeah. Like work and money get weird, you know? Yeah. I definitely, um, I, had, I don't worry about that for, all right, good. for us at all. Uh, where'd you grow up? Well, I grew up in South Florida mm. and I moved here 20 years ago. With my dog and my surfboard, and you know, I got really, really lucky to to be a working actor since basically the first couple of weeks of moving here. And, yeah, um, yeah. Most and people don't the, have that. Now happen. I'm at the point like where you're at, where I've I've been serving L.A. Hollywood world for 20 years, mm -hmm. and looking out the window right now to, to the air quality that we're breathing is insane. To just be like. Why am I still here? I know it's, but fucked. I'm here because I love creating. Right, there it is. I love creating so yeah. much that I'm like sacrificing my quality of life and my ability to maybe live another 20 years because right. I want to make art. But literally, we need oxygen masks. Like, look at this air; it's insane. I know, and this is, and actually, this isn't even as bad. Like, it's kind of a winter not too like sometimes it's way worse than this but yeah even on a good day it's bad here but we, we were talking about this <laughs> we were talking about this uh we're both we were talking about this last night we were saying we both sort of hit the wall the uh about being living in the rat race yeah. and you and i both lived in laurel lived in laurel canyon you still which about, has uh, changed a lot yeah. it was one of the birthplaces of rock and roll and yeah. it's magical magical and it's still magical but it's not the same now it's just uh disrespected by the city it's the traffic is insane. It's the number one travel two-lane highway in the United States. Is it really? Yeah, something like 200,000 cars drive up and down that yeah, little two-lane road. And the city's basically selling off any little piece of land that's available on top of houses, on top of houses, on top of houses. So like nature's just going to be gone sooner than later, and you're seeing it destroyed. So it's a really sad thing. So that's why... I got out of there and went to the beach where we live now, mm -hmm. both of us, which is an amazing place to live. There's nothing like Venice. I love it so much. It's the most diverse like human place that I've ever been on the planet. Yeah. It's where art meets crime. Yeah. But it also has the best air quality in LA as well. It's well, like that's breathing well, gold, which is, is, is a blessing and a benefit. Right. But at the same time, it's still in LA. You're still in LA. And Even I, though you're on the, as far, besides living in a houseboat, you're as far as you could possibly be from the Hollywood chaos, but you're still in the TMZ, the 30 mile zone. We're still in the, the, the EMFs. What does that stand for? Electromagnetic, Electromagnetic regalia? Oh, that's not F. <laughs> Electromagnetic frequency. Right. Which basically we're bombarded by really bad radiation mm. from the cell phone towers and just in general uh the, the power lines etc cetera, etc cetera. it's right. like we're, we're in this vortex of radiation which affects your cellular structure so when you get out of la even an hour you feel different yeah two hours even more different so the desert is a great place for you to go and i heard you got a house there yeah. which is so rad you'll be out exciting. there with me yeah definitely we're going to be running naked yeah, we'll be in right the desert. Yeah. yeah yeah it's funny you said that because the guy who sold it to me goes yeah man you could run around here naked if you want because you're just by yourself in the desert yeah. uh you so come out and run naked sometime yeah uh, <laughs> and it's a place we could go write and create yeah. and do music yeah. and just be away from the because it's a funny thing. I spent most of my life in cities, San Francisco, New York, L.A. So I'm just like my whole life I've been a city boy. And the older I get, the more I just want to be in nature, which is why I moved to the beach near you, which is, again, as far as living in L.A., that's as good as it gets. But you're still in the madness. I still like feel stressed out when I walk outside. It's just chaos. Well, and to come into Hollywood is a real <sighs> uh, you know, mental challenge for me, like yeah. getting into the traffic and feeling the energy of all the stress that people are carrying around in their cars and it doesn't help that I listen to the news. Right. Yeah, that doesn't help. <laughs> no, no. But it's like, uh, it's all together. It's all yeah. part of it. But when you get yeah. out of out of the vortex, all of a sudden, you start to like live a different way. And I think yeah. that's really important to, to at least balance yourself out as an artist by giving yourself 
um, a place where you can unwind and, and tap into a more peaceful life. Your art will benefit, actually. Yeah, I agree. Well, it's interesting because you're right. It, or you could be inspired by, like, for instance, making, like, for I produce music, so like making music in the city might inspire you to make a certain sound, and then going to nature might inspire you to make a kind of a different sound. So there is inspiration, but, like, at what cost? Like, I would rather be out uh, in, in some Mother Nature chilled out than, like, making some industrial music. I'd rather go play a flute and do some different shit yeah. than be like it also it also comes down to realizing what you know why are you doing this why are you giving all of your life force energy into creating i mean right. obviously we enjoy it and we love it so that's what keeps us in the game but there's also a certain point where there's other things to enjoy right. there's other things that also bring you a tremendous amount of you know bliss and and then all of a sudden you could kind of start spending your energy and time in a, in a different realm maybe it's not you know, uh, coming to Hollywood and making content. Maybe it's like gardening or totally. I think you, you know, could have both, though. I think it's a matter of having a balance. And for doing me, both. it's always going to be both. Yeah, but you have to be able to create that world for you. And for me, mm. what gives me my escape or maybe my um, refuge is taking shelter under my guru's feet. Yeah, Wing, Wingman the Guru's G. the dog, by the way. That's the do- uh, yeah, Guru G. Yeah, Wingman G. Wingman is the highest form of life on the planet. I take shelter under his lotus feet, and he purifies me. So anytime I'm in anxiety or stress, it's only because I'm not paying full attention to my guru. He looks it, happy right now. He doesn't look stressed. Yeah, he's considering thirsty. Considering he's in this environment. Does he have his papers, like his emotional support papers? Yeah, he's a medical response ant dog, so he's above the law. He, go, he comes on every flight with me, every Comic-Con, every recording session, every business meeting. He's probably the only dog that has ever been in you know big network pitch meetings and, uh, you know... It, it, there's, he lives this wild like Hollywood lifestyle, um, and he does really well. He's a real gentleman. He he also has books, children's books, where he teaches meditation and yoga and how to eat healthy and let dogs lead the way. So he's he's um, he's transcending. Actually, I just got an amazing news, which I can't really say too much about. But he's transcending into a whole bunch of cartoons as well. Of course, he is. You're his owner. He's going to transcend into all those regalias. Are you a dog owner, Dillard? I'm not a dog owner, but I'm a dog lover. Okay, so you make love. I'm sorry, you uh, <laughs> you love I'm a dog. dog. I'm a dog person, not a cat person. Okay, now, to, um, have you ever had a dog? Yes. What kind? Um, mutts. We grew up. Oh, and a wiener dog. Mm, okay. A one-eyed wiener dog. And in the South, do you think, okay, so here's a hippie dog, right? This is a very hippie bohemian <laughs> dog that lives in Venice. As you can see, Greg here is of the hippie realm. Correct. You are from the North Carolina realm. Would you ever want to have a hippie dog or would you rather have a Southern dog? Well, I'm really into, I mean, this is bad. I'm really into all those mixed breed doodle dogs right right. now. The hypoallergenic designer dogs. I thought that was what a pillow was. No, it's the ones that like, they don't have dander. It's like human Uh, hair. Oh, so you. They're like fluffy ones. I love them all, man. I love them all. I used to be be exclusive big dog guy. Yeah. You know, I grew up with Rottweilers and German Shepherds and not Sharpays. And then I was like, I need big dogs. Yeah, yeah. And um, all of a sudden, you know, I, I started to hang out with a Chihuahua, a little mini toy Chihuahua. And Dwayne, your dog. My dog, Dwayne. Rest Dwayne, in peace. who was a little yeah. mini Dobie, right? Well, didn't Dwayne inspire you to get yeah. Guru? So I had Actually, a little... Actually, Dwayne was first. Yeah, Dwayne was first. I, I uh, did a movie with him years ago, and I brought my little puppy uh, on to my, into Miami, and he was a little terrorist, and he, but he was the <laughs> cutest little guy, and, and he bonded with Greg. And then I think Dwayne. that planted the seed for you to get a little mini cutie. That's when I realized, oh, wow, little dogs are Dude, rad. They're rad. They can come with you everywhere. They're so cute. Yeah. Ladies love them. Ladies I love, love them. Yeah. yeah, and they're portable. That's the best thing, yeah, too, is you can bring them small. everywhere. Pupes are small. The poops are small. The hair, there's not a lot of yeah, hair. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you don't have to worry about them like biting a kid's head off. Well, no, you still got to worry about that. But biting a kid's not head off, off, or not just off, snapping. But yeah, there's little dogs can be a little snappy. They I got to make snappy. sure people don't put their face to his face. He's got to come to you. Right. I've definitely like uh, I've, he's almost bit some people by you know because because oh. he's so yummy. So it's hard to not like go right. go right put your face in him like oh like yeah. but he's like yo I don't know you like yeah. that he got the like, Venice street in him too yeah a he's a gangster you know right. he's an East LA cholo dog oh that, where you adopted him. Yeah, he rescued me at the East L.A. Kill Shelter. So, oh, really? Society. He was an East L.A. dog. Oh, so yeah. he got a little spicy attitude. Oh, he's spicy, dude. But Wait, he's how also old this, is he? We don't count. He's the eternal one. Oh, okay. He's taught me how to be a Taoist and to just be He's a Taoist and a Taoist, but I wonder at what year he came out of his mom's vagina, technically. Well, yeah. we're as old as Mother Earth. I mean, you can ask him, Guruji, how old are you? 72. Pure presence. Yeah. 
He's pure presence. He see, as you can tell, we have uh, my friend here. He's from other realm. Oh, Aww, see, he came over. Baby. He felt it. See, Greg, I don't know if you know this, but Greg is from another universe. Clearly. He's not a human being, okay? <laughs> I, even though he, he's in a human body and he, you know, has, speaks English. I've seen him, like, I've been over to his place and he didn't know, and I've seen him sort of transcend from human Levitate? to alien. Well, he levitates all the time. And I've seen him, like, the alien. He didn't know I saw, but he has the crystal bed that he sleeps on. I right? do. He has the Wait, crystal really? Bed. A crystal amethyst biomat bed. Yep. That it basically that it's sounds wingman's. Cheap. Yeah. Well, he, okay, let's talk about some of your alien beautiful things that you do. Buddha, here's some He's water feeding him water. Here's Greg is water. one of those guys who uh, is. Not your typical Midwest American who's just going to eat steak and potatoes. He's vegan. Yeah. Uh, he long? doesn't like blood or pus. 20 oh. years. 20, 20 years vegan. Years. And, and if you look at him, he looks very healthy. It's working for him. Correct. You know, well, so whenever he, we go have lunch, I go to his world and I go eat vegan, vegan. with him. And I'll go have a little, you know, fake uh, meat burger. What is it called? Impossible? No, we don't like the impossible burger. No, the impossible has uh, it's all a good, the... It's a good step away from dead animal yeah it really is dead rotting carcass essentially is not good for you and the science is there as well so people are starting to find you like oh i guess eating a dead animal isn't good for me yeah it's not good for you it's not good for the planet it's disgusting and if you had to kill an animal skin it you know deworm it see the blood the pus and not only that like hear the animal scream and be scared it's gnarly 99 percent of people would be vegans essentially well I, cause I've because because you buy it in a plastic wrapped you know, you know, branded thing. You're like, oh, this is no problem, but really, it's really bad for you. It's bad for everything. It's well, you know, because I've been on, I, I, I had that happen. You know, I've been on hunting trips, and it really changed my whole like perspective. I mean, when you go kill the animal and you see what it goes through, it's it's heavy, you know. And I did. I think I last. I think when I went hunting last time, I uh, I said to myself, yeah, well, I'm not eating any meat tonight. I'm having salad. No, he's okay. He won't. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, he I saved him. He jump. He's okay. Yeah, he's very. Oh. Cool. Uh, so it's a, this is a this has been a hot topic on the podcast before is meat or no meat, and I don't judge anyone. Whatever anyone wants to put in their I'm body, they you. put in their body. Like, so I'm happy that it works for you. I'm happy that it works for you. I'm a strict vegetarian, vegan, but I eat hot dogs, hamburgers, <laughs> most meat products, but strict. <laughs> The thing is, dairy is liquid meat. It's blood and pus mixed yeah. with cow lactation. I don't it, like dairy. It's disgusting. And what it about also, oat milk? It's totally demonic. Oat milk's fine. What about, what, what's your almond suck milk almond. Is my, almond. almond milk is my favorite milk, but I love coconut milk a lot, obviously. So um, almonds don't have feelings. So you could eat, drink Here's them. the thing. A plant can rejuvenate. A plant is right. meant to give you everything you've ever wanted. Trees and plants are designed to basically, you know, you, you take the fruit, you take a leaf, the thing can continue to live, essentially. Right. Uh, an animal is done. What know? about an alligator that's it, arm grows back? <laughs> I don't. I've ate alligator once. Eaten? Ate? How would you say? I've You've eaten. eaten I've that's eaten a past alligator. Tense. Yeah, Thank where you. in Louisiana? I actually had alligator in Asia. Have you been to Asia yet? <laughs> I have. What I part? Have. Tell I've me been one. to Philippines and Ooh. I've been to Thailand, and I really yeah. enjoyed both of them. Yeah, I really love the culture. I love yeah. the people. They're mm. so sweet. Yeah, I love. I mean, I'm. I have offices in China that I haven't gone to yet. One of the partners in the the Noise Nest Network, the animation company, um, our merchandising arm has like huge, massive, like Google like headquarters. Dude, kind let's of thing. go! I want to go to can. China. My my issue right now is that I don't like to be apart from Guru. Right. So you can't I, bring. Oh, you can't bring dogs to Asia. I mean, I'm not going. to. It's just like a really you know yeah, you treacherous and, flight yeah. of like 18 hours wow. and crazy probably protocol to even get him to enter. So for me right now, I'm, I'm I limit my uh, travel to you know five hour flights. Yeah, because uh, yeah, that's yeah, a lot longer than five hours. To because get to I Asia. really I really cherish my every moment with him. I don't want to waste any second. So for me, my life is dedicated to the time we have together in these bodies. Now, what about what and about what another going. dog ever? Or yeah, once once I get some land somewhere like what you're doing, I'm planning on opening a sanctuary, a wingman G sanctuary where we can basically foster out dogs and show people how to learn to serve your dog. And then when you serve your dog purely, the universe serves you purely. It's like that concept of when you smile at the world, the world smiles back at you. Mm -hmm. You have to pick something that will assist you in being able to smile at the world. How did you find this? Uh, because you coming from Florida, he was a pro surfer. I don't know if mm -hmm. you know this. He was a, uh, I, I mean, you he rips. He's going to be humble about it. I know how he doesn't like to like brag or anything, but he was a pro. Were you pro or pro am? Junior pro. Say? Junior third, pro. Third in the U.S. Third uh, in the U.S. Uh, at surfing. Yeah, this guy. In Florida, which is Kelly Slater. A lot of good surfers come from Florida. It makes you very Florida. hungry. 
Well, we were <laughs> I, hungry surfer. We would, okay. So when we did a movie in Miami years ago, a big hurricane, a hurricane, yeah. a hurricane yeah. came. So we all had to go to shelter and hide. This guy said, uh, "I'm going to go paddle out," and he paddled out to get the waves during the hurricane because the waves are bigger. So literally had uh, the whole cast of the movie shuttling in vans to go into the Mikasuki, which is in the uh, like inland um, in the Everglades, so we could be away from it. So he went the opposite way into the ocean to go surfing. Best was, waves. I mean, for, you for know, Florida, in Florida yeah. you pray for storms. And uh, back then, the, before global warming was totally uh, in full effect, you know, it, it wasn't such a bad thing to pray for a hurricane. It was like, oh man, it's going to make good waves. Now I would never wish that upon anybody. But you still surf a lot. But like, I love hurricane surf. It, the waves are amazing. I've actually been out in the water when a, a tornado actually came out while I was in the middle of the ocean, and I had to go underwater while the tornado went over top of me. What's the longest you've been it underwater cool. holding your breath? I mean, I, in the pool, I've I've done it for maybe a couple like couple minutes. I, I did a minute and forty seven. Yeah, I just like been that. working on it because I've been Smart. scuba diving. I just got my scuba certification, which is my new favorite thing. They're telling me here at the show stop talking about yourself so much. So I'm trying not to, but I like podcasts where it's a conversation, not an interview. Like I listen to Chris Ryan or Joe Rogan and they just talk. It's not an interview. But the note that I got from the show is stop making it about you. Talk which, about me more, Simon. Well, that's what we're doing. But I, but I like in conversation to talk <laughs> about, about what I'm doing. Let's, talk about, me. About Let's talk about me. Let's talk about me. But I like to share stories about what I'm doing too. But the note was stop talking about yourself. But I... I it's not a vain thing. I just like to have a conversation, not an interview. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I scuba dive, so I know about, um, it's all about me. I love so, snorkeling. Okay, so snor- it's like snorkeling on, uh, on you know, on tank. steroids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, it's the best. We got to get you your certification because it's like going into outer space. You're underwater, completely weightless, like looking at, t- you know, a 150-year-old tortoise going over you as the sun's coming through. It's the most incredible psychedelic yeah. without doing psychedelic experience you'll ever have. So we got to get you there so we could go on some trips. I'm down. Yeah. I'm down. I think we should make a wave pool out in the desert at, on your new property. Have you ever gone to Kelly Slater's wave pool? The Not one, yet. I want his to. His is in Fresno or Texas? He, he's got a couple now. See, I want to learn how to surf, but I'm just not a surfer. Yes, you are. You have that I, long, lanky body. Where's your center of gravity? I, that's the thing. It's like, I've been surfing, but I'm a snowboarder at heart. You snowboard? Of course. Uh, we should go snowboarding, I'm too. down for that. Now, okay, uh, let's talk about um, how. at what point did you... Because when we first met, I remember you taught me a really good lesson. We were doing a movie and I got, when we were doing the movie, somebody gave me, this jeweler gave me a, a <laughs> ring and it was a, a filled with emeralds and diamonds and rubies and it was a $10,000 ring, I remember they told me, and it was a gift. So I had the ring and I was like, I wouldn't wear this, it's really gaudy and not my style. And I, and I lost the ring and I was tripping out and I remember, fuck, I lost the ring, dude, and you said very calmly, you go, hey man, easy come, easy go, you didn't have it a week ago. And I was like, fuck, you're right. It was a very zen attitude. And then I found the ring. <laughs> But even back then, 15 years ago, you sort of had this uh, enlightened vibration about you. Uh, was this, is that nature or nurture? Were you born into being sort of a Zen baby? Or did you sort of read a couple self-help books, read the Celestine Prophecy, take some acid and turn into a guru? It was definitely a combination of uh, being born with the, the sensibility and the want and the need for peace. You know, I was, I was lucky to grow up in a neighborhood where I had a lot of nature. And ultimately, I feel like I asked for you know, bliss and peace very young. I would even say, like, I want to find eternal bliss. I didn't know what that was, really. And when I moved to California, I was introduced some, to some very enlightened masters like Yogi Bhajan, who brought Kundalini Yoga to the Western world, right. and A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, who brought the Hare Krishna movement. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Say that again? A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. I'm going to quiz you on that name later. That's and then uh, Osho, who I love so much, Rajneesh. Right. She's one of the most controversial characters ever to Bajwan exist. Bajwan Rajneesh. I yeah. love Osho so much. Yeah. And then I got into you know Terrence McKenna and uh, Alan Watts and and um, uh, the, the great, uh, what's his name? He just moved on. I, I'm just starting Ram to... Ram Das. Ram Das. Wow, wow, wow. And, and basically the, these masters have assisted me in connecting the dots. But more so than any other master... That I've learned from Wing Menji is my my anchor to really being conscious and aware. Did you ever do any psychedelic Animals. drugs to help, or is this all natural without any? Because I don't want to get you in trouble. We can edit this later too if you don't want to talk about. It. But was there ever a mushroom experience that enlightened you? Was there ever? Or you have kid fans? Maybe we can't talk about well, this. I do a lot of Chinese herbal mushrooms. Okay, and the. the Rishi mushrooms is uh, the they call it the the immortal mushroom. These yep. are things that boost your immune system and. 
take toxic metals out of your body. But yep. essentially, I really am a, uh, an advocate of exploring uh, psychedelics um, in a sacred ceremonial uh, way. Yeah. And those kind of things are actually uh, very, very important for the human experience for, for you to be able to actually unplug from a system that is essentially uh, destroying earth. And when you do these kind of ceremonial experiences, you kind of get into a different flow of things. And here we are now, um, you know, on that trajectory of wanting to wake people up through art and wake people up through, you know, you know, inspiring them to kind of get out of the, the traditional way of living, which is destroying earth, which is destroying ourselves. So psychedelics can be very um, helpful in, in kind of tur turning this, this sinking ship uh, around and maybe having a shot at uh, saving the planet. Psychedelics can help a lot. Very well put. I liked how he just said that one. Because I basically say what you just said, just not as clear and... Uh, Eloquently. Thank you. Well, I mean, it, I mean we're, we're, we're totally brainwashed and mind-controlled by religions and governments for the purpose of controlling us, essentially. And it takes a lot of rewiring and work to heal yourself from all this programming, the mental slavery. And psychedelics help to break down those walls. And that's why they're so, uh, you know, um, the governments are so against them. Even marijuana is something that opens up your heart, your mind, makes you kind of uh, get out of the rat race mentality. But unfortunately now with marijuana, like you said, it kind of can make you like uh, lower your vibe mm. because marijuana is not the same as it used to be. They're poisoning it. They're genetically modifying it. They're putting chemicals in it. And now they're taxing it. So now it's become part of the government. And now the government's making money off of you with it. So it's become like... Which it, changes the energy That's what I'm saying. Well. Everything's so you know, sensitive, especially when it comes to plants. You know, plants are full of water. And they've done these tests where if you, you know, go to your water and you say, I love you, water. You're the most beautiful water in the whole world. I'm going to drink you and you're going to heal my body, my mind, and make me hydrated and like give me bliss. The water molecules change into these beautiful mandala. I've heard about this. Yeah, there's this, there's scientists that study it. Or if you yell at the water like you mother, you you're you know horrible, ugly piece of crap water. You know you, know, the water molecules get all distorted and ugly and messed up. And basically, you become what you associate with, what you hear, what you see, what you drink, what you eat, what you listen to. We're just sponges. So. It really does matter. Everything does matter. That sounds really crazy to a lot of people, but you're actually right on a, on a lot of what he's talking about. And that's why Dasani water is so bad because someone yelled at it in a Coca-Cola factory. Do you like Dasani no, water? No, it's my, trash okay, water. Okay, because there's a horrible factory where these people are underpaid and they're getting and they're yelling at the water. They're cursing. They're they're on their self. The it's water's pla negative. And plastic, essentially yeah. plastic itself is a demonic situ entity itself. It's destroying Earth. I read today that you know, Malaysia is turning away thousands of crates of trash yep. that Canada, yep. America, mm -hmm. Australia. They're it all ends up over there. They're just shipping it to these countries. And the, these countries are, Malaysia, like, they're like, we're not taking your trash anymore. Yeah. I was just and out just there when plastic. that was happening. Yeah, Single-use no, plastic has to be yeah. banned, yeah. period, now. But the only reason why it's not is because politicians like Donald Trump, like Joe Biden, like all, all these, these corporate you know, uh, owned, you know, slave, um, slave, basically they work for the fossil fuel companies, which is plastic. And we have to get them out of office. People have to take a stand. So people like Bernie Sanders, people like AOC, people that are standing for the Green New Deal, people that are realizing this is a climate emergency. This is a situation where if we don't make immediate changes, we're screwed forever. Our, our ability to breathe clean air, eat good food, jump in the ocean, basically live on planet Earth is just down the drains. And it's yeah. only because of corporate greed and essentially fossil fuel oil companies that not only are killing us, but they're also killing us with the wars. All of our tax money goes to the defense, right? You know, Defense Department and trillions of dollars of war machine stuff. But that's just to protect oil companies' assets. It's oil wars. And oil's destroying planet Earth 
fossil fuel is just dist- fossil fuels are destroying planet earth and we have to shut it down now do you think that these old dinosaurs that think that way will eventually die out and it will change that's why they don't care because they're gonna die soon right. they're right. just gonna make trillions and trillions of dollars more before they you know go into their yep. grave that's why the youth and people like us who are in the, the business of well i'm 45 content. you're younger than me but yeah i'm right in the middle nonetheless but you're an, you're the eternal i'm one. an eternal youth that's, you know that? that's why i have the body you, of a 17 and year old. you have nothing to fear now's the time to fight for mother earth because it's an eternal experience. If you don't do it now, I mean, you could do it your next life, but why not do it now? Yeah, it's crazy, so man. So it's I, I saw that happened. I was just in Asia, and I, I, I guess up. all this plastic washed up on the beach, and you couldn't take one step without stepping in plastic, and it fucked me up, man. It was really, like, it, it, it really makes me, every time I buy any plastic now, because sometimes you have to, I just feel really guilty, you know? You don't have to. That's the well, other uh, thing. I we mean, can... if you're in an airport, and the, 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 like, I guess I'll drink the toilet water. I don't know what else to do. <laughs> I know what you mean. I know. Like, like I usually from... bring a thermos with me, but like, I, I, I I'm just very cognizant of it now. Anytime there's a wasted plastic, like if you ever order anything on Amazon, it comes in 80 things of plastic. Dude, You're like, do we really need all that plastic? Every time I throw trash away and yeah. I try to just use paper bags, like when I go to, um, you know, the market, I get all my, you know, groceries and I use the paper bags later for my trash bags instead of plastic, you know, trash bags. But I throw so much trash away and it's, everything's wrapped with plastic. Yep. Multiple times, and that's because of lobbyists making sure that every product that you buy has to have a certain amount of plastic on it. And again, that's the fossil fuel oil industries controlling our governments and regulating and making sure plastic is used in, on every product that you buy. So how do we, the question is, how do we stop it? By voting. Yeah. You have to get out and vote. You have to. California be, will always win on a federal level. How do you think? Because California will always be green. Seems like you know. It's it, not that green. Yeah, I mean, I guess compared well, to some the, places, these, uh, these, these, whether you're Democrat or Republican, right now, most of these people that are still in power, even in in California, they're not doing enough. Like the the mayor and the governor and all these these tools are basically not moving fast enough. Yeah. And it's because they are being paid by lobbyists that work for the fossil fuel industry. Money, 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 money. And we need to vote for people and put people in power that realize how critical of a moment this is for our survival. And we, we can't go on with business as usual. It's you know, I was just in Bali and they don't allow, you, there's no more plastic, there's a plastic ban there now. So if you go to a store that you can't take plastic, they have the whole, like Costa Rica, Bali, and a couple other countries are the first ones to do it. Like, I can't believe we're behind these I don't want to say We're be- underdeveloped countries because that sounds bad and you can't say third world. There's no way to say it anymore. But for a country like America, you'd think we'd be way more ahead of it. But there's other countries now that are doing it before us. Dude, we're going yeah. in reverse right now with this leadership. We're literally going, uh, our environmental regulations are being uh, destroyed. Our national parks are being sold off to oil field, uh, you know, uh, spec- speculators. And this is all because of people thinking that, oh, you know, we, we, we're going to be okay. You know, right. we'll, we'll get through this. We can just sell off everything and just make a bunch of money. And, you know, later on, Earth will repair itself. No, it's not going to work like that. Yeah. We're at this turning point where there is no going back if we don't do something about it now. And we need leaders that are going to stand up for Earth switching, our environment. Yeah. Switching gears a little yeah. bit. How did you enter your virginity? Um. <laughs> <laughs> I got a harsh uh, left I like that. I'm all, I'm a very uh, I'm an advocate of uh, people being able to explore their sexual energy. Mm. I also feel like um, we're we're suppressed, and that's another oh, way yeah, they, can, they, they they control us through uh, suppressing our sexual energy. Well, on the puritanical religious element, you know, they don't want us to. Sex is so taboo, but it's just sex. Do, uh, are you like? Do you think when you make love to a beautiful person, mm-hmm. okay? Man, woman, dog, alien, doesn't matter. Uh, do you feel that um, when you release your chi, right? Yeah. That it, it drains you of your life force? Or do you feel that it's healthy to have multiple orgasms throughout the day? It's a double-edged sword. It, it Whatever is. gets I mean, you off. I'm just saying, it, you know, there's something to not releasing your seed yeah there's something to holding it yeah especially you know when you really get into uh tantric lovemaking which means you're not just kind of like you know having a 10 minute session where you have you the want brain to, orgasm where yeah, it yeah but, but up it's actually kundalini. a process and it's actually a little um awkward because yeah. the you know the girl's like what are you doing you're you know, you know yeah they they're want not you to used, finish they're, yeah, yeah they're, they're not used to you not just you know how guys are pretty quick usually would you prefer a minute man or a long man man uh, <laughs> I mean, minute, because minute, well, 
I feel that okay, here's the thing about sex. I sometimes feel like some people want marathon sex. I'm a ten to fifteen minute yeah, guy. The marathon I don't need to be the, thing is like a wild I think some people like, I got shit to do. My I girlfriends gotta, are just like, I don't know why we're doing this for hours. On it doesn't matter when you're young, maybe <laughs> go at it, but I feel that like fifteen minutes is plenty. I got things to do. I gotta yeah, you know yeah, but to make it healthy. You want to be able to bring the energy up, bottom line. Even right. if it's a 15-minute session, maybe don't release your seed. Be right, able that's to what I'm l- saying. Learn how point. to bring your energy up into your heart, have heart orga- orgasms, throat orgasms, oh. brain mm-hmm. orgasms, and basically <laughs> through tantric lovemaking and learning the techniques of how to do that, you can achieve that. But it does take some awkward little weird like you know techniques while you're so, making love, like, like literally laughing and literally ju- getting out of your sexual yeah. position that you're in and like f- bouncing around for a minute and be like, bro! Like yeah. just shaking it up. That's making, some Osho shit. Yeah, yeah. Making the energy move up and then getting back into the lovemaking session. But also where people go wrong in lovemaking is they're not doing uh, foreplay and afterplay, which are also in, the, in their own way. Afterplay. Many- Interesting theory. Let's talk about afterplay yeah. because I got to work on all these things. Yeah, because after you make love or after you basically had your main peak orgasm, there's different level, there's different orgasms. So after you're to actually lay together and not just separate mm-hmm. you you actually feel a big difference if you stay together after rather than being like oh, i, I guess it go. depends on the partner but yeah if it's somebody no, no, yeah. like even energetically you'll right. feel healthier if you lay together and like caress each other and yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. be together for at least another like 15 like, like for another seven seconds and then go do <laughs> yeah yeah now uh do you okay what do you think having sex with somebody that's uh that's maybe somebody below you um like for instance if you were to have sex and the person isn't somebody you loved or respected, that it lowers your your vibration to a certain degree. Yeah, we become our association. You so. know, especially if your penis is in a vagina mm-hmm. and then you connect, then that your vibrational frequency might become low vibration. Like if she was, and I'm not judging. Let's say that she was a horrible human being. Yeah. That was you know a drug addict and a stripper. And if they do that, that's okay. But if you were to make love to them, does that make your penis stripper drug addict energy levels? You're gonna have to deal with that. You're yeah. going to become that for a little bit until you untangle the, the energetic cords that came with that deep, deep connection. And how do you, you untangle that? I Just mean, through time? Jumping in the ocean. Ooh. Uh, you know, doing yoga. Yeah. A lot Breath of sage. Work maybe, yeah. You know. Put, oh, burn sage on your penis. <laughs> yeah. Or around it, at least. Yeah. Because yeah, we've all had that regrettable lovemaking session where you just want to shake it off. So the ocean, we live at the beach, so for us, it's an easy fix. I jumped Someone in that lives in Kansas uh, City, what are they going to do? Cold shower, sage? Yeah, cold shower. I took okay. a cold shower shower today yeah yeah but does that mean does that mean you had sex with a horrible human or i mean really (laughs) i'm just fucking with you i just i just know that we become our association and the the more intimate of the association the more energy you're taking on so yeah whatever it is but especially what you're putting in your mouth you know you know the mean holy you know the mean the the word holy yeah whole like i'm a holy man yeah that actually is in reference to controlling what comes in and out of the nine holes of your body. Well, let's count them. One, no, two, I three, know. four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, I got nine. So holiness is actually... Uh, <laughs> oh, butthole, penis hole, vagina, but yeah. It's, okay, it's about controlling holes. what comes in it's and like out. It's like a nine-hole golf course. Like <laughs> of the nine, nine holes. Yeah. If you, so if you truly want to be a holy man or a holy woman, learn to control what comes in and out of those oh, holes. Oh, I like that. Yeah. On that note, I want to, I want to, we covered a lot. Uh, on that note, I want to say thank you so much for coming down yeah. and redoing the show because of yeah. technical difficulties. Well, the we first could one talk. sucked anyway. This, this is, is better. better. This is better. And uh, I can't wait to keep working with you on our new yeah. project. Well, we won't talk about it too it's much. Just the, the guru is having a beautiful day. Yeah. I want to thank Dillard for being here as well thank and you, being Mama the Dillard. female energy yeah, that we <laughs> so richly deserve. She's so beautiful. It's nice to have. Isn't oh, it nice thanks. to have a beautiful Southern yeah. woman around? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And tell people listening where they could find you on social media if they want to hear your beautiful views on life greg sipes g-r-e-g-c-i-p-e-s across the board yeah. everywhere everything yeah. and make sure you check out the noise nest network where we're going to be showing a little bit of the behind the scenes making of our cartoon together as well love it yeah. love it love you baby love thanks you for too. coming by yeah, all right man. be good yeah, yeah hope you guys enjoyed that episode with greg my fucking hippie homie neighbor Sorry about the noise, I'm driving on the freeway right now and this is a Toyota Prius which should be quiet but it's starting to make some engine noise and it's got 110,000 miles on it so maybe it's starting to get a little wonky. But these cars are supposed to go for like 300,000 miles, that's why I got it. Hopefully the engine doesn't blow up on my dick. Hope you guys like that one, Greg's out there and I like people, he's a fucking weirdo and a fucking great guy and I like weirdos and I like great guys. 
it's just funny how we both got the Venice thing going and the, uh, you know, Laurel Canyon thing going. If you live in L.A., you got to know those are the two best places to be at. But we're both fucking fed up with it all. So let's see what happens next. Uh, love you guys. Uh, keep sucking your own dicks. And, um, you know, next time you uh, turn on the TV and listen to a cartoon, it might just be Greg Sipes. Love you. Bye. Hey everybody, you are listening to Nervous Rex, a Nervous Rex. Meow.